trying to figure out which is the best dog food for your pet is head spinning. Just walk down the dog food aisle. When it comes to options, it seems there's literally no end to them. Low fat, high fat, grain free, high molecular peptides, high protein, young dog, aging dog, pro joint diets, dental diets, salmon, beef, chicken, veal, steak, refrigerated, homemade, all natural, no additives, no sugar, no joke. All of these actually exist. So there's good reason to feel a bit overwhelmed. But we might have some answers for you. Just like with people, right, we, um, uh, nutrition isn't that complicated unless you have issues, <laughs> right, and then we have to be careful. Dog food in general for a young, healthy adult animal um, is philosophically normal, boring, brown, not really, really cheap, but not necessarily the most expensive dog food is perfect for a, a healthy animal that doesn't have any other issues. In general, most animals do really, really well with um, a well-established brand of boring dog food. It doesn't have to be colored or shaped or a lot of that stuff is made for the people who want to buy the food and not necessarily the animal's needs. Okay, so price and shape don't really matter. What does? You want to make sure they have a good source of protein. That is absolutely um, important to make sure that you know where the dog is getting their food from, um, that it's one of the primary ingredients. Looking at a dog food label, you would really want to look at the first couple ingredients. There's a lot of stuff that's fillers in there, so making sure that you know what source of protein, uh, where it's coming from, and what they're actually receiving. How can you tell if your pup isn't getting the stuff it really needs? It's something that is very um, similar among animals that aren't getting the nutrients that they need is that their hair coat looks poor, they're dry, flaky, um, and the reason for that is the body needs those nutrients and so they use the important nutrients on really important parts of the body like your brain and your organs. And if your hair looks crummy, that's, a, that's an afterthought, right? A lot of times when I see an animal come in, I can tell very quickly that their nutrition is, needs to need some work because their, um, their coat looks dull or um, patchy hair loss. And a lot of times that comes with other diseases as well. Uh, so nutrients are really, really important. But what about dogs that have some sort of food allergy? When animals have allergies, um, when we think of allergies, sneezing and coughing, dogs tend to have allergic skin disease. So they can be allergic to pollen or whatever, but food is also a portion of that allergy too. So um, you have to go through a lot of trials to determine what your, if your dog does have a food allergy A, and then what it is allergic to. Um, and so we've been very, very lucky in the past probably 10 to 15 years, the development of truly hypoallergenic diets that um, any animal with any allergy to anything can eat and um, will see an improvement. How about signs it's time for a doggy diet redo? Weight gain in particular, and, that, um, and that's true for everyone. As you get older, your metabolism changes and sometimes slows. Um, animals after, the, after they're spayed and neutered, their metabolism drops by about 15%. So you hear people say, oh, well, if I get her fixed, she'll gain weight. It's like, well, yeah, or you could feed her 15% less, right? You actually save money, <laughs> so it's a plus. Anything else we need to know in this dog food discourse? So yes, as animals change and age, they have uh, joint disease, right? We all get arthritic and achy, or they have organ diseases that we may have to address with a diet change. Uh, so again, particular animals may have particular issues that need to be addressed with diet change, um, and your veterinarian is the best person to tell you how to do that. Hopefully armed and ready with this information, the head spinning stops, and the practical dog food buying begins.